One of the better concerts over the last few weeks in Toronto was uh, Tom Waits at the Music Hall, and you got to spend some time with him. That's right. I interviewed Tom on his tour bus, and if you don't know Tom Waits, you're really missing something. The guy is really weird. He used to be Ricky Lee Jones' old boyfriend. He's the one that discovered her, and Ricky Lee Jones is going to be on the show tonight, too. Tom Waits just sort of sits there and rocks back and forth and talks in this real sort of drony kind of way. I think you'll love them, actually. It's spectacular Tropicana Motel. It's also the home of Tom Waits. Like Liberace, he lives amongst the possessions nearest and dearest to his heart. His magnificent 59 caddy and his knee-deep collection of Lionel Hampton albums. Tom's stylishly cluttered decor has fed his creative imagination, and from it, the guys produce some of the finest musical ramblings around. Just before I left town, it got you know, a little too aggravating for me. I just, the place is turning into kind of a, an amusement park for guitar players. You know, it's it's lost a little of its old uh, charm. I, I moved I, I moved in there about five years ago. To, you know, primarily just to you know kind of uh, you know hide out there. And uh, what's happened is that, you know, the giant has, you know, gotten a, a certain amount of publicity and subsequently uh, it's kind of defeated my original purpose for being there. So, so I left and uh, uh, I now live on Crenshaw Boulevard. No one will ever find me. It's a long street. And what about that old legendary Cadillac of yours? Did you take that with you? Did you leave that back at the Tropicana? No, I brought that with me. So you got it going. Mm -hmm. Since the Tropicana as a hotel is one thing, but when it, you know, when any kind of a place, you know, develops a reputation, then, uh, you know, the rats move in, you know. So that's what's happened. So I just, you know, I moved out. There are a lot of new wave type of uh, musicians moving in there, right? Well, they stay there, yeah, when they're in town because it's centrally located and there's a lot of nightclubs around and, uh, you know, it's right on the corner of uh, Bedlam and Squalor, and they seem to enjoy that. What about the way you work? Uh, you've got a lot of imagery in your songs. It seems to go in sorts of lists of flash visions. How do you remember all that stuff? Well, it takes a certain amount of discipline to be a writer. You know, you have to, uh, you know, it requires a, 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 you know, setting aside time for yourself to write. You know, it's difficult to write on the road because of... Yeah, it's very time consuming out here and I don't have a lot of uh I don't have a lot of um days off, you know. But I I manage to um, you know, keep a a, a a list of things, you know. I have a pretty good memory for ideas and I'm working on stuff right now while I'm out here. It's it's difficult for me but I'm I'm trying to work on a stuff for a new album called uh it's called Heart Attack and Vine. What about film stuff? You've done a bit of work in film, haven't you? Well, I've written a few things for uh, pictures. I wrote a thing for Paradise Alley. And I wrote another thing for a, a motion picture about uh, Skid Row in downtown L.A. called On the Nickel. And uh, there's a play that I may become involved with in West Hollywood. What's the story about? 
And it's a story about Harry the Hipster Gibson, who was a, 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 a kind of a reefer smut comic in the 40s. He was on the cover of Downbeat and everything. He did quite well for a white boy from the East Bronx playing on an all-spade circuit, you know? And, um, you know, he did all, uh, you know, uh, you know, reefer-inspired humor. All of his stories began with a, well, you see, there was these two guys that were, you know, they all, you know, was, and, uh, but he was very important. He was also a piano player, and, uh, it's a story about him going to the West Coast in the early 60s and returning home because uh, his father is dying of cancer and has all these scripts for morphine. That's the way he used to treat cancer in those days. Huh? And um, so it's about him being reunited with his father, who's a piano tuner, you know, lives in this small you know, apartment. And it's about Harry coming home to, like, you know, you know to cop, you know. Right, you know? <laughs> <laughs> but it's uh, it all takes place in, this, in 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 one room, you know. And um, it's, 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 it was written by uh, Harry the hipster Gibson's uh, daughter, so it's all uh, real factual. You know? And uh, sounds like a potential box office smash. No, I wouldn't hold my breath, you know. <laughs> but uh, what, is this going to be done like a real done like a real underground kind of? Uh, Endeavor. Well, it's a small little theater called the Los Palmas Theater. You know, I might, you know, do it just to kind of break the monotony of of traveling and, and doing what I've been up to for the last you know couple of years. You know. Might give me a new challenge. You know. But uh, you know. You were obviously a really important person in terms of influencing Ricky Lee Jones. You were the one that inspired her to record her stuff. How did you meet her? Uh, I met her uh, at a Dodger game and about seven years ago. Yeah, she was sitting next to me at a Dodger game. And, uh, did she know who you were? No. And, you know... I got up and went to get like uh, coffee, you know, for uh, us, and uh, I came back. She, she, you know, ditched me. You know? I, th I was making points, you know. But <laughs> I didn't run into her until uh, about a year later at a place called uh, Dupree's Paradise. It's a small little nightclub in Compton, and uh, we got better acquainted. And uh, you know, she's uh, she's a real sweetheart, you know, she's a really unique individual, I think. You know? um, she uh, received a great deal of recognition immediately, which is a little difficult because uh, myself, I started out doing beer bars and scuffled a little more, and you know, I had a chance to kind of get adjusted to everything. You know? And they shoot you full of self-confidence immediately. You know, it's, uh, it's a little difficult to swallow sometimes, but she's doing real well. <laughs>